Jesus loves sinners. Amen? Because that's all he's got. <laughs> that's all he's got, it's a bunch of sinners. I told the crowd Wednesday night, uh, I saw a bumper sticker that I just absolutely love. Now, when I first saw it, I didn't like it. But then I got to thinking and I got to grinning and I like it. And it said, the bumper sticker said, Jesus loves you. Then underneath it, it said, but I'm his favorite. <laughs> I thought, no, I'm his favorite. And I thought, no, we all are his favorite. Amen? Jesus loves sinners. But that's all he's got to work with. I mean, we're just all a bunch of rascals. Y'all good with that? We're just a bunch of people that just need a touch from a holy God who wants to do so much for us. I think sometimes that we think God is waiting for us to reach this certain level of maturity before he'll actually say, well, you're about to get it. I, I want to put my arms of love around you, but not yet. And the truth of the matter is that he just wants to reach down and hug us. He just wants us to know that he loves us and we're the apple of his eye. We're the gleam that makes him smile. Us. Us. But he loves us enough not to leave us in the broken condition that we often stay in far too long. He wants us to move from where we are to the very best that he has planned for us. And he's patient, and he's loving, and he's kind. But he has a plan for us. Sometimes I think it's kind of like having a Christmas tree with all these presents underneath it that have your name written on the present, and God has given them for you. And what he wants you to do is to come and take it and unwrap it and, and enjoy it because it was given with you in mind. He has it specifically for your joy for, so that you can be happy in the Lord, so that you can have it. But sometimes I think that we just leave a lot of those presents under the tree. I mean, God took the time, if you think about it that way, He doesn't live in time, but it, it was something that He wanted to do. He put the thought in it and He, he gave it so that we could have it but we just say, yeah, wow, that's great. What else, you know? Or we may even unwrap the present and look at the box, listen to me now, and know what it is and just still just leave it there, right? Now, when I was a kid, on Christmas morning when they said go, right? Let the unwrapping begin, right? And it was tear into it, and it was and, and it was open up the box, and everybody else would be doing something, and I'd be getting out my my football field here. Y'all remember those? It was so great. You'd line them up and you plug it in and it would vibrate. Can I get an amen? Yeah. And my man we had the ball would sit there and run in circles and just go back around in circles. But I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. And the smile that was on my face, you know, God has so much plan for us. The God of the universe wants us to enjoy everything that comes in the gift of God for us. I want to share a quick word before we ever get started. This is just the introduction, so this is free. We talk about this word a lot called eternal life. Y'all good with eternal life? But it means more than just living forever. Right. Remember the Garden of Eden? After they sinned, he had to, to put the, guard, the guards around the tree of life because he didn't want them to eat of the fruit of the tree of life then and stay in that condition forever. And he doesn't want anyone to be separated from him forever in their sinful condition, but that is the definition of hell. So it's more than just living forever. But you get to the end of the Revelation, Revelation 21, and that is where he wants you to have that. He wants you to enjoy that. Eternal life means more than just a duration of time because time won't exist. 
But it means more. Come on now, listen. Everything that is of the abundance of the nature and the glory and the grace of God has been given to us. He wants us to enjoy all of the benefits that flow from the perfection of God. So love that has no end. Joy that has no end. Peace. Happiness that has no end. So yesterday afternoon, by the way, I, I can't remember of one time in the last two years where I've been invited to the hospital. It's been a tough two years. It's been a tough, tough two years. But they took Jimmy into a hospice room, and at that point in time, they didn't care. The only thing that they said was, don't be so loud, you're going to wake the neighbors or something like that. So uh, they, they, they gave me a call, and I, they, they actually had before, yesterday, they, let me, they called me and let me pray for him on the speakerphone. And I tell you, that, that was more for me than it was for them. But um, yesterday I got to go up, and they were, they were, all the family was there except Sheila, and she doesn't like crowds. And, uh, everybody's got to do their own thing. And, but they were all in there, and I just went over there and got down, squatted down. And, you know, they say that he your hearing's the last thing to go. So I just talked to Jimmy for a while. And I wished him well and told him how much I loved him and how much I thought of him. Um, then uh, we, we talked some more. I prayed. And I told Jimmy, I said, it's okay, it's time to go home. I know you're a fighter, but it's time to go home. Ben texted me last night at 8.23 and said, Dad's gone, he's finally home. And uh, eternal life began not last night, but a long time ago when he gave his heart and life to Christ. And his name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Jimmy's like the rest of us. He struggled through some things. But I, I tell you, I think he finished well. And uh, he just got an open glimpse into love like he's never known before. Right? And we get a, a little glimpse of joy down here, but he's got a, a whole new understanding. But guess what? He hadn't got it all yet. He's got it all, but he hadn't got it all because he's got more of it to enjoy. Amen? When I said happiness was a bowl of ice cream, it got bad when that bowl got empty. He just found a bowl that won't go dry. Right now, we struggle back and forth. We come and we, 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 we bask in the, in the presence of the glory of God. And like John 15 tells us, he knows that we should abide with him, grafted into him, remain in him. But yet sometimes we chase a different way. When Jesus began the great sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, the first thing that he wanted us to know, that there is true joy, there is happiness, there is a thing of being blessed by God, and it's a progression. If you have your Bibles, stand with me in honor of reading God's Word. Because it's so short, guys, can we back up to verse 3? I told them verse 6, but that's where I'm going to be preaching from. But let's get a running start in verse number 3. Blessed or the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now look at what we're going to look at today. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for loving us. 
you have it all, but you wanted us. And you knew what separated us, and you made a way. It cost you, but we were truly the beneficiaries of it. Lord, today we just want to say thank you. How grateful we truly are for the eternal blessings that you have lined up for us. So Father, speak to us today. Make it personal from your heart to our hearts. Father, all is vain if we don't hear from you, but oh, what joy there is when we do. We need you, Lord. We desire you. We hunger for you. Nothing else will satisfy. Help us to unwrap the presence that you have for us so that our joy may be full. In your name I pray, amen. You may be seated. We learned last week that the relationship and walk with God begins by being not lifted up in the Spirit, but understanding that without God we are bankrupt. We have nothing. We're busted. We're broke. We have no standing whatsoever. But blessed are the poor in spirit because once they realize that, God says, I will open up to you all of the kingdom of heaven. He is not going to have a gate that you can't enter into. He's not going to have a room of blessing that you can't enjoy. He's not going to have a gift of part of the, the glory of God that He's going to keep from you. It's all there for you. But you have to first come understanding your need. So secondly, He says, blessed are those who mourn. What, what happens when we look at our life? If we see our life in the sin that God sees it, do we look at it and we ignore it? Or do we mourn for our sins? Does it knock us to our knees in grief? Or are we okay with it? Have we learned to settle for the sins that break the heart of God? Just allow them to remain in our life. But he says, if you learn to mourn, then you will also find the comfort that comes with it. And blessed are the meek, that God has done so much for, but yet we put it under His control. We take our lives and we give it to Him. And all the things that come with life, knowing that the God of the universe is watching over us and is preparing things for us and has things that may not look good at first, but yet those are that which is best. So we put them under His control. What good is the power of the Spirit of God living within us? What good is that if we ignore it and walk in our own spirit, our own will? But just accepting the things that God has given us in life. Oh, the blessings for those people like Jesus who accepted the path that God had placed for him. The strength of all the universe was within him, but yet he yielded it to the Lord. And with that, God opens up everything. You can inherit all. You can inherit the earth. But then he says today, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Y'all look up here. We know what the term hunger and thirst means. We just really don't experience it too much. I can look at y'all and y'all can look at me and we hadn't been too hungry, have we? I mean, we're pretty satisfied. Matter of fact, some of us are a little bit more satisfied than others. Can I get an amen? <laughs> amen? Oh, we don't hunger much. 
if we miss a meal, we don't like that because we get a headache. I, had, I was preaching on fasting one time. And somebody says, I can't fast. I'm like, yeah, you can. No, I can't. I get a headache. I said, that doesn't keep you from fasting. You just don't like it, right? They were actually saying there were some things in their life that they wished that God would take care of. And I took them to Mark 9 and said, this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting. Are you willing to do the, what God would have you to do so that you can find the strength of God living within you? They really weren't. What they wanted was the microwave religion. Just give it to me where I don't have to do anything and, and that'll be good enough. But God says, are there some things that you're willing to hunger for? What are you hungry for? What are you thirsting for? That's a powerful feeling. I mean, sometimes in church, we don't speak in tongues here, but we speak in stomachs sometimes. Amen. I mean, the stomachs will start to roar, and you're, all of a sudden, two pews over, they can hear you saying, if the preacher will ever. And that's when the church candy comes out. We start eating mints to try to get rid of that hunger that's there. Thirsting is an amazing thing, but I don't think too many of us thirst, really. I mean, if we, it, there's one thing of, yeah, I like to have a nice drink, and we go to the refrigerator, and we get a nice water or something like that. That's, but no, what if you went for a prolonged period of time? Like a person walking through a desert. After Jesus was baptized, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tried and tested. And he hungered and thirsted. He had always known God, but not like this. Not in the veil of the flesh. This was fresh. He had to know what we go through and what we feel like. And Jesus put himself in that place so he could know what it was like to hunger. In 1991, I met a man who came to know the Lord. He was a large man. He was a very large man. Matter of fact, he had trouble standing up. Young man, young man, less than 30 years of age. But uh, he was like Mount Rushmore. He was just huge. Well, he had gotten saved, and the Spirit of the Lord had gotten upon him, and he began to pray, Lord, give me a hunger for your word and not for food. Give me a hunger for your word. Replace the hunger that I have for food and give me a hunger for the word of God. Y'all look up here. It worked. He poured himself into the word of God. And this guy who was in his late 20s who had just come to know God began to quote scripture left and right. And, the, and that physical frame began to melt away. And this enormous guy became a man of God who, was, who, was, who, had, who said, I'd rather have Jesus than a chicken leg. Amen? I would rather do without so that I could do with more. And you can physically see all the weight go away, but you could also see the glory of God upon him. Now listen to me now. I wish that were the end of the story. After he reached that level of attainment, he began to be satisfied, and actually a little pride came in. Pride with his new body, but pride with what he knew from the Word of God. And he stopped doing the things that made him who he was, and guess what happened? He went back to the man that he was before. There have been times in our life, may the Holy Spirit point this to the areas in our life as we need it. There have been times in our life that we have been extremely hunger for, that could only be satisfied with the Spirit of the living God, Jesus Christ, abiding with us, leading, guiding, comforting, and helping. 
but we became satisfied with a substitute. And that was okay for us. May the Holy Spirit add meaning in our souls. We talk about revival all the time because we need revived. Right? Don't act so holy. I know you. I know you're just like me. And the one that makes God shake his head is the one who's satisfied, who no longer hungers and thirsts for the things of God, the right things of God, living the things of God, living the truths of God, walking in the ways of God, speaking the love of God, living it out in your life. Not just another chapter of knowledge that you put in some file cabinet in the back of your mind that you've learned it and, and it's there, but you're not practice, practicing it. Blessed are those who want more of God and nothing else will do. Nothing else will satisfy. The Bible says in John 7, verse 37, on on the last day, that great day of the Lord, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Do y'all like that word, anyone? Are you thirsty? There's a fountain that you can drink from. If you're living in a desert in your life, there's an oasis and his name is Jesus. Jesus was walking through a land that not too many people wanted to go. He met a woman there. We know her as the woman at the well. She came to get a drink in the hot of the day because she was not accepted in the society that was there. But God led Jesus to that place to meet her because God wanted her to get a drink, not from that well, Jacob's well, but from God's well in Jesus Christ. And he said to her, John 4, verse 13, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. That means it's quenched, folks. We'll never thirst. But the water I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up unto everlasting life. Did you hear that? Everlasting life. That means forever we will be getting more of the precious fountain of God springing up within us. Fresh new drink for today. More of the grace. More of the understanding. More of the joy comes from Him. The only thing that keeps us from that, do we want to drink? Do we want to drink? Sometimes a waiter or waitress will come and buy, and they'll look at us and say, more water? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm all right. Right? You've done that. I wonder if God walked by and said, would you like to have more? I wonder if we say, no, I'm good. I'm good. I wonder how many people today, you're here. God bless you. If you're watching online, thank you for watching. But I wonder how many people today are not going to have an encounter with God because they're not going to be hungry for the things of God. There's, there's this beautiful, bountiful table of the blessings of God, and, and people just, no, I'm good. I'm all right. The old men used to say that a full dog won't hunt. And with that, nothing ever gets accomplished. What will it take? What will it take I've been reading the Sermon on the Mount. Y'all got your copy of God's Word in front of you? This is extra. Verse 27. 
you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. Y'all know what adultery is? But I say to you that whoever looks at, his, at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Just to look at her and that to happen in your heart, you've already committed adultery. That's not where I'm headed. The next verse is where I'm headed. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than your whole body to be cast into hell. You got some temptation that's coming against you? Cut it out. Hold on. He says, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. It's worth it to get rid of it now. What is it that you've grown accustomed with that's keeping you from hungering and thirsting from the things of God? He says, get rid of it. Oh, preacher, that's radical. Jesus said, pluck out the eye. I call that radical. Cut off the hand. I call that radical. My, my, my point is this. Would you rather pluck out the eye or would you rather God pluck out the eye? You keep praying for blessing. Look, you can have blessing with two eyes, but two eyes that look in the right direction. You can have the blessings of life with two hands. He gave them to you. He wants you to use them. You don't have to cut it off. But what will it take to move us from where we are to where we need to be? Why don't we hunger? Why don't we hunger? Why are we thirsty for everything else instead of the things of God? <laughs> the truth of the matter is this. If we were truly hungry, if we were truly thirsty, if we could see the oasis in the distance, we would crawl on our hands and knees to get to it. Luke 15 is the story of the three lost, right? The lost sheep, the lost coin, and a boy that left home. And he went and he squandered everything that he had and found himself living among pigs, eating slop. Can I just ask this question? I wonder how long he ate slop before he said, it doesn't have to be this way. My dad, my dad's servants have more than this. And the great moment when he came to himself, he said, I will arise and go home. How many people today are still living in the slop because they hungered and thirst for it, and they went and they found it, but it ended up not being what they thought that it was going to be. Sin thrills before it kills. But there, there's something that's keeping them from getting up and going home. Oh, but when he did, he got so much more than what he was looking for. He just wanted to, to be a slave and just have the bare minimum. But, but his dad said, no, 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 no. Get the robe. Kill the fatted calf. Put the ring on his finger. Put sandals on his feet. Because my son has come home. I wonder how many of those presents God's wanting us to come and open them up and get them out of the box and find the joy that he has for us.
What's keeping us from that? Just us. Church, I had all plans and purposes of preaching two Beatitudes today. We're not going to get there. I just want to know this one simple thing. Are you hungry today? And if so, what for? I know you've got temptations. I know. I know there are some hard things that you're dealing with. I got that. But it doesn't have to be that way.